morning artists. Today we're going to paint a close-up study of two clematis blossoms, two clematis florets. They're going to be really rich and velvety and there'll be lots of chance to use tight detail at the end. So if you'd like to do a demo like that today, I'll see you in the next clip. Hi, I'm Alison, the Pottering Artist. Welcome back to my regular viewers. And if you'd like to join us as a new subscriber, simply click the little red square in the bottom right hand corner and then click the grey bell and make sure your phone can receive YouTube notifications. So you fancy painting a gorgeous blossom, a clematis blossom. I'm going to show you how to do that using very slow step by step instructions so that you won't get left behind. So if you get a cup of tea I shall see you in the next clip. Hello, the colours we're going to use for this clematis painting are as follows. We're going to use Schmincke, this is a brilliant purple and the code for it is 930. Again all the paints will be listed in the description underneath. Then I've got Burnt Sienna for Windsor & Newton. Alizarin Crimson by Windsor & Newton Windsor Violet, Windsor & Newton um, I've got Sap Green by Dale Rowney in Windsor & Newton range is called Permanent Sap Green and then the last one is Raw Sienna The brushes I'm going to use will be these um, Aquamarine Masterstroke brushes I've got these from Curtis Ward, they, they're a lovely set and the link for that my affiliate link if you want to get it via that is in the description. The sizes I'm using today are four, uh, sorry, two, four, six, and ten. So if you want the outline, you can email me at alisonfennelart at hotmail.com and I'll send you the outline along. Also, I'll send you the reference photograph. And today, I'm actually going to be doing my work on these, if I just zoom out. These are watercolour boards. Now the options with watercolour painting are that you paint on a sheet out of a pad or a loose pack of paper, or you paint on watercolour blocks, or you can use watercolour boards. These are the most expensive option, by the way, because what they are is a piece of board with watercolour paper stuck on top of it, like this. So you can see there's the board, this is Crescent board, and on top we've got a sheet of 100% cotton rag paper, it's really gorgeous quality. Um, they do cost quite a bit. Again, I'll put a link to this in my description um, if you want to try them out. This is quite reasonable in that they're 8 by 10 so they're not huge and there's only three of them. So if you did want to give them a try, this is actually my first time ever in my life to try these out. So it's it's quite economical if you want to go with that. So the painting we're going to aim for today is this clematis. I'll be painting the main flower and some leaves to give you an idea of what to do. And then I'll be leaving the second flower to you to complete. So let's make a start. Hopefully today, by watching me do this demonstration on a clematis leaf, you can dispel any doubts you have about how to paint flowers. And in this tutorial, we'll be doing a lot of repetitive work. So I'll be filming one section, and if I'm repeating something, I'll do that off screen in order to keep the length of this video more reasonable. The first thing I'm going to do is take my clean pot of water and I'm going to activate this size 10 brush by dipping it in, giving it a bang on the base of the jug inside. Then I'm going to dry my handle so I've got no chance of droplets of water running down there and splashing in out of control. So I'm going to wet the whole inside of the flower like this. I tend to deposit a lot of water in the middle of the flower and then I spread it out from there with my brush. So 
So while I do this off camera, you can be doing the same. To do the little ruffled edges of the clematis petal, you might want to switch to a smaller size brush. For example, I'm using the size 4 now as I do these little twiddly bits and especially those beautiful fine tips. So just keep working your way around each petal and you can see the sheen is building up the moisture which we need. Just to point out to you, as I'm continuing to wet the petals, some of the first petals that I wetted are now damp. The moisture has gone out of them. So you may need to re-wet the tips of some of your first petals. With these boards, you don't need to have stretched them before. They should stay flat as you work on them. And I'm still wetting my petals and making sure that none of the areas have dried since I first started. Right, now we're ready to add some paint. Overall, my petals are all moist and we're ready to put the first purple washes in. So to do that, I'm going to bring in some of this beautiful, brilliant purple by Schmincke. I'm mixing it thoroughly with water and this is a pigmented wash and what I'm going to do is drop it in at the outsides of the petals. I'm not painting the inside because I'm going to let gravity do that for me. I'm going to let the water action do that by itself so that we get some natural flow. We need to do this quite quickly because the, the water is drying on the, the brush, on the, on the paper. You can tip it here and there as well, you can see the shine still on my paper. So we need to work quite quickly to get this done. So just continue in this way, just painting the edges of the clematis petals and every so often Tip your board like that and let it get a soft edge. Carry on doing the next three as well. As I'm painting this petal, it's dried out too much and you can see I'm getting a hard edge. So the way I'm going to correct that is take a clean, moist brush and quickly just touch into that dried edged purple and try and drag it in as best I can. Doing this exercise gives you good practice in knowing how quickly the watercolour paper can dry out. And there we have our first wash of the clematis flower. And I'm going to let that dry completely. I'm just checking to see if my clematis is totally dry now. When you look at it, it looks completely dry, okay? But if you just feel this part of the base of your thumb, that feels cold and slightly damp to me, whereas if I feel an unpainted part of the board, there's no coolness there. So that's the warning signal that your painting is not completely dry. If I were to start painting on this now with a dilute wash, it would probably cause back runs. So to avoid that, I'm just going to give it a gentle dry with a hairdryer. Now we need to add some stronger shadow colour to the petals, and now we're going to work one petal at a time. So I'm going to wet with my size 4 brush, I'll pick this petal here and just moisten it all. The wash underneath shouldn't be disturbed because it's had time to dry and is now bone dry. You might get a tiny little bit of colour uh, movement but nothing significant. So just brush your water on gently and that'll be fine. Now while that is just soaking in for a minute, you can see the moisture there, um, let's make sure it's 
I've got it to the edge and that's a bit damp that area there wasn't much sheen because the paper took the water in straight away okay let's see you can see the water running I just want to share that out a bit so it's not puddling anywhere tip it to this side so that this side to the right side of the petal gets water as well keeping it all consistently moist now let's go and get some brilliant purple and a little bit of Windsor Violet and a little speck of alizarin crimson and a little droplet of water now we can add some stronger shadows and putting them towards the uh, right hand side and right out to that tip okay and for now I'm going to leave um, the rest of the petal apart from a few little specks in the, the dips where the leaf has got a ruffled edge and then just let that tip see really the, the, to be honest I've left this is a bit too wet because there's too much surface water traveling around so it needed to have been a little bit drier now I need to take size 2 brush and just moisten it and then dry it and then I can suck up any excess water and it makes the centre of that petal a little bit paler ok let's do another petal I won't do this one because this is still too wet so I'll work on this one so again, we need to rinse your brush, get a, cl a clean brush and soak each petal. With clear water. And this time I'm going to make sure that it's not too wet because as I say, the last petal had too much running surface water on it. It was a bit flooded, which we don't want. So let's look at this. See there's a little bit of a flood there, there's a little bit of a lake of water. So I'll tip it back down to the towards the centre of the clematis. And then share it back out that way. Right, that's better. That's better. So I'm going to drop in with my size 4 brush now that same mix, which was brilliant purple, some Windsor Violet, and a little speck of Elizabethan Crimson. And that was a pigmented, a pigmented mix. So let's have the sort of sharp colour, the darker colour, on the right hand side here. And a few little specks in where those, uh, where the, the petals fill. I'll just tip that. And just let those little dips bleed as you bleeding now just to diminish the harshness of them okay so let's do the final petal I'm going to be off camera now but I'm going to do the same thing wet this and then we'll put the color in so I'm going to wet it now this petal if you're wondering how far into the center of the flower I'm going well I'm going right into the heart of it we'll be doing uh, slightly opaque stamens and centres so it'll show up on top of our, of our clematis we'll be using a bit of gouache for that ok so I'm just tipping that back this way as you can see I've got no flood and I've got no damp so that petal is perfect now for dropping some dark colour again 
So let's mix it. So brilliant purple, a speck of Windsor Violet because that's quite strong, then a droplet of water and some alizarin crimson and another droplet of water. This pigmented mix is a lovely consistency now for dropping this colour in. So this bottom right hand side of the petal is going to be the darker side and as you can see we get a feeling of curve on the petal. I'm just going to put a, a, a tiny little bit there and a little bit there just to suggest the little riffles that the clematis has and I'm going to leave that flat. I'm painting flat so that it doesn't bleed anymore. So we've done three petals now. I'm going to let this go bone dry and then I'm going to do a little bit of work on these darker petals and then start bringing the centre of the flower together. I'm just going to add some little uh, dents in these furrows and frills on these remaining three petals now. So to do that I'm only going to wet the outer ridge I'm not going to wet the whole petal as I did with the first three petals. So moisten that. I'll just prepare this one by moistening in it now as well. I might need to re-moisten it, but let's just start activating the paper. Now for this I'm going to go to my size 2 brush and again pick up that same mix we've been using for the shadows which was Brilliant Purple, Elizabeth uh, Crimson and a speck of Windsor Violet. And my paper, if you can see, can you see it's moist there? Now that is too moist, you see, that's 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 pulling. Okay, so I need to tip it the other way and just maybe suck up those extra bits of water. Whereas the one I wet there has dried in already because it's a very hot day. But that's the moisture you need. So I'm going to then paint in these little curves. And they'll bleed slightly. And then I'm going to take the tip out. All right. So let's go back and moisten the one that had dried a bit. Let's just gently re-moisten it. I'm using the side of my brush. Right, and then just drop in A little bit there and maybe a bit there and a bit there. Just a little bit of contrast on the edge and we taper that to a fine a fine tip because the clematis tips are beautiful aren't they. So same again with this one I'm just going to wet this edge and maybe that edge and drop in those indentations. Right so this this paper is ready now to drop in those little curved areas, little crescents to suggest the, the frilliness of these petal edges and again you can tip your board and help that blend in more seamlessly and I'm taking that out to the tip for, uh, to exaggerate that. Now into this mix I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna, a little drop of water just to make it a bit more dilute and now I'm going to start adding some very strong uh, veins so I'm going to take them from the tip in to the centre very lightly. 
I don't want them all the same size and they can even be a little bit broken in places, a little bit fine, you know. So I'm using the absolute finest end hair of the brush. I'm careful not to paint into any of that wet area that I had there on that petal we just did. Very lightly. No. So now for the centre of the flower I'm going to mix up some white gouache with some uh, burnt sienna and some raw sienna so that we can paint the sort of centre of the plant those those lovely little fine stamens I don't know the exact word for them so I'm using arcs, an arc shape to do that and there's a sort of little uh, pod, a bit like a poppy seed head sort of shape in there as well and then there's this corona of tiny little dots Now these might not show up perfectly so I'll just redo them if I need to in a brighter yellow or green but for now that's all I'm going to put in there and let that dry. So to work on the stem now and the bud I'm going to pick up some permanent sap green, some raw sienna and paint the whole stem green there's a little bit of stem that goes in between those two petals and comes out the other side so that's a nice bit of overlap isn't it And if you want to do more, um, if you're interested in leaves and pods and berries, I've just launched a lovely new course called Fan in the Flames of Fall. And it's a beginner's course for painting leaves and berries in autumnal colours, just yellows, oranges, scarlets and ruby reds. Um, the link to my course, Fan in the Flames of Fall, is in the description below. And it's on a website called teachable.com. So if you want to have a look over at that, I've currently got a £5 discount on it with the code GRATEFUL5. But you can read more about that below. And in that course you'll find much longer in-depth videos, real-time in-depth videos on all these subjects that I've just mentioned. And that might be of interest to you. The course is yours once you buy it for life and you have email support from me when you need it. So let's just paint this last leaf and then we'll be able to do some shadows. So we've got some basic green all over. Now we need to go and get some shadow colour. So I'm just going to pick up more permanent sap green and a little speck of burnt sienna to make a darker green and this is a pigmented mix it's not very runny we do this quickly we put the shadows in on the right hand side of the stalks and where the stalk comes out from under a petal it will have more of a shadow so you can really push that you see See how darker that is there? That's a little trick of the eye. 
Now this petal, let's see we have a darker piece here and then just taper it away and maybe an arc there and the central vein we can suggest and then we can suggest some veins going off to the topmost side just lightly. Sorry, I think that was off camera. So that's what I've done on the bottom leaf. Now for these leaves, let's commit to some veins and some darker sides on the right here as well. And again, there'd be a bit of cast shadow from the tip of that clematis onto the leaf. This part of the bird would be darker green. And we may have some veins showing there with a darker green mix. And again, where this sort of stalk comes out from behind the plant, we can do a bit more shadow because that looks quite believable, doesn't it? The sunlit part. And this part here would be much darker. And finally, this little bit. This bit of stalk can be darker and then on the right hand side a shadow. So I think what we need now to finish off is to bring some of this green into the centre. So let's put some of that green all on the right hand side of this sort of, it's like a poppy head sort of shape in the middle of the plant and redo some of these curves, the little stamens, very delicate sort of tenderly stamens there so that they show up a little bit more and I'm going to use stronger sap green now to show off some of those little specks. That shows it better doesn't it on the petal and it's sort of is supported by the earlier paler wash that we did so it looks has another dimension. Okay so that's a very basic clematis flower. If you'd like to now have a go of doing this one using those techniques that will stand you in good stead. And before I finish I've got to add a little petal there. So I'm just picking up some simple, uh, a straightforward mix of brilliant purple and drop that in. Like that. And then some of the darker mix, which is brilliant purple, plus Windsor Violet, plus Alizarin Crimson, and put a darker touch of it there, and maybe a little dark touch of it on the bottom right hand side. Okay, thanks for watching and if you've got any questions put them in the description below and don't forget to email me for the outline and the reference photograph. My school called The Pottering Artist is on teachable.com and if you'd like to look at my very first course which I launched this week you can click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.